Mr. Ted from Peculiar, Missouri. What's on your mind? Well, uh, just a timely topic, I think, about Halloween. Oh, yeah, coming up a few days. Yeah, more specifically, my wife forwarded me a Facebook podcast from a, a gal who apparently used to uh, practice witchcraft, and now she's a Christ follower. Uh huh. So a big part of her ministry uh, apparently is to, you know, educate people about some of the demonic roots of things like, as she described in what I heard, um, Halloween. And so she <clears throat> she described things like how uh, dressing up in costumes was a way to uh, hide yourself from the demons and decorating a jack-o'-lantern as a way to scare away the demons mm-hmm. and saying trick-or-treat has its roots and so forth. So she lays out this, this lot of historical context, apparently, that I can't validate or refute, but um, I'll take her at her word. Okay. And her argument is basically, because this is with the roots, when you partake in these similar activities, you're also opening yourself up to demonic activity. Hmm. And I want to save you from that, so I want to educate you. So that yeah. was kind of her premise. And I have some initial thoughts, but I thought, and I left, I searched your website for Halloween, didn't find anything, so I figured I'd give you a call. Okay. Get your take on it. Yeah, um, sure. I do have a few things to say about this, uh, and I'll just say as a, a broad response, I, I disagree with the person who did the thing in virtually every single thing that she claims. All right? Um, and therefore, the consequence or the recommendation I would give as a result is going to be different as well. Okay? Um, I, I, I do not think... Look, at when Paul... There's a couple ways I could approach this, but let me just... I'll just grab some things. When Paul talked about idols, he said there is nothing in an idol. An idol is nothing. You know, the prophet said, you, they have eyes they can't see, they have mouths they can't speak, they have ears they can't hear, and who, who makes them are like them kind of thing. They're just wood, okay? They don't have this internal power, all right, to them. And this is why meat sacrificed to idols, and think of that. Well, this didn't have any apparent evilness to it, even though some people thought so, and they were skeptical, and so Paul said, well, don't you know, don't bother those folks. But, you know, meat offered to an idol, an idol's nothing. And so the meat is not somehow tainted because it was offered there. You can eat it. And apparently if you got meat offered to idols, it was cheaper than regular. So, you know, poor people could eat that. But notice that what Paul seems to be saying is there's nothing in the thing itself, even though the thing can be used by others for something that's wrong. It is the thing that they use it for that is spiritually suspect, not the thing they are using. Does that make sense to you? Yes, it does. Okay, so I I think there's a number of places like that, and I cited some here. I can't give you the chapter and verse, but you could look it up. You just see this point, okay? Yeah. Um, Secondly, is that that just because... Okay, so the mention there, you wear costumes. Costumes was to scare away the demons, okay? Is this person then... Um, against all costume parties of any kind under any circumstance. What do you think? Yeah, I had a similar thought. Yep. Yeah, I doubt it. Well, wh- why, why not about all costumes, but simply about costumes on this night? Oh, the, the difference, I suspect, is that in these others' costumes, people who are wearing them were not trying to scare demons away. I mean, just think of, um, you know, Shakespeare. So you've got stage plays, people wear costumes. They didn't even have women actors. They had women, they had men pretending they were women. And sometimes they had masks that they would use in, you know, old stage productions. That's where this concept of hypocrite came from. You're, you know, you're hiding behind a mask. You're, you've got a mask that shows one thing, but the real self is underneath and behind it. So these are all costumes. Oh, that's not a problem. Why not? Well, because they are not being used for occultic purposes. Okay. When you wear a costume on Halloween, are you using that for occultic purposes? Yeah, that's the core question. That's well, what the, matters, well, right? What's the answer? The, yeah, yeah, no, for us, of course. No, well, no, for anybody. Yeah. I mean, almost anybody. And when you think of all the kids and people who dress up in costumes, 
that right. people are not using these for occultic purposes. Now, it may not be wise to you wear costumes with occultic themes, but for, in my view, for a different reason. If I dressed up as a devil and I had a red suit and a pitchfork and all that other stuff and I'm dancing around, I'm not going to attract demons to myself. I have no reason to believe that demons are going to be attracted to my, my outfit. Right? Yeah. How, how has right. that opened me for demonic activity? Now, she might say, well, I know it does because this is what happened in my experience in the occult. Well, okay, uh, there's a testimony about that. I, that makes no sense to me, and greater is he who is in me than who he is in the world. And Paul seems to indicate that these things don't matter, and maybe when you were in the cult, you were vulnerable because you were in the cult. But now that you're a Christian, I don't see why that vulnerability continues in the way that it did for you before. So I'm not even even if I were wearing a, a Satan a Satan outfit. Now I don't think we should do that, but for an entirely different reason. What happens when you dress up like Satan in a red red tights and you have a pitchfork and some horns and you're dancing around on Halloween? People do not take Satan seriously. It's it's hmm. treating a, a a very significant spiritual thing in a frivolous way, and I do think that there is some traction that the enemy gets in terms of a spiritual scheme with regards to Halloween. And that is, yeah. is they, when it comes to occultic things, they make it look frivolous and a game when it's not. And this is probably something that the, the person that you're referring to and I would completely agree on. But notice it's not because there are occultic powers attached to the ob objects. It's because what I'm acting out in that instance is uh, is is a is a pattern or a way of minimizing or frivial making fr frivolous. I don't think frivolous frivolizing is a word. So ma taking <laughs> taking spiritual things, demonic things, in a frivolous way, and that is a problem. Okay, but that would be true not just of Halloween costumes. That would be true of a whole bunch of other things that might be trivializing genuine spiritual dangers all right so, that's really good i had not thought of that okay. and i don't believe she brought that up in her monologue so no, it's that's interesting a good, great to, point that with that to me is a much bigger danger i don't think that you know jack-o-lanterns maybe jack-o-lanterns were made in the past to scare demons away that isn't you know we, we put a jack-o-lantern out i mean if we were it would be just to light the way and display that here you can come to our house and trick or treat all right that's all it's not because we're trying to scare any demons away um we actually have a pumpkin outside of our house but it's not got a face on it <laughs> with a candle in it so what is cutting a face in it how does that invest it with some kind of spiritual magnetism that draws demons to us i am not practicing an occultic thing it is not what i'm doing I'm just carving a pumpkin. You know, what if I put a Jesus name in the pumpkin? Would that scare the demons away because it says J-E-S-U-S? -S? I don't think any way the pumpkin is configured has anything to do with demons. I have no reason to believe that. And so, so I, don't, I think, does that make sense? Oh, sorry to interrupt. No, no, that's right. Yeah, what I think she would say, and she did say many times in her podcast, she would kind of play devil's advocate. That's no pun intended. <laughs> She would oh, that's say, interesting. well, yeah. you think it's innocent, you know, you're dressing up in a costume, you think that's innocent, but you can't, and this is what she kept repeating, but you can't separate that activity from the origin. Yes, you she can. kept repeating that. You absolutely can. Yeah. You absolutely can. That is an assertion that she is making. And uh, why isn't the same thing with uh, meat sacrificed to idols then? How can you mm -hmm. separate that meat from the idolatrous practices that it was that it was uh, a part of. I, I mean, what is that a perfect parallel or what? I, I don't know what's a better parallel right out of the text. And Paul yeah. said, no, it's nothing. There's nothing here to worry about.